All right, let me set the scene. The tower's got no Anderson. People are dying. But Jade has found a place where there could be Anderson. So what do you do? You help Jeff build a fucking firewall. That's what you do. What's up, you cretins? It's Cobb. And welcome back to Dying Light. Let's get into it. It's time for a new weapon. I've got my guns, but why would I want to kill something immediately when I can smack them five times and laugh while they're being electrocuted? So I made this. I call it Daddy's Home because it reminds me of when my dad would come home after a long day's work and use me as a punching bag. I head for Jeff, and on the way there, I spot some of Rice's men beating a guy. So I shoot two of them and watch the third runs away and gets attacked by zombies. Maybe if you didn't wear piss yellow clothing, the zombies would have a harder time spotting you. I get to Jeff and he tells us that he shut the gas off in preparation of what he calls But I need to turn the gas back on. Jeff's lucky there's a thin bit of wood between us, otherwise I would have headbutted him. I head for the first valve and I'm chased by two blokes that think it's a good idea to explode at the sight of any person. I wonder what caused these guys to become like this. Maybe they had a bad case of explosive diarrhea when they turned. What a way to die. I clear the remaining zombies and turn the valve on. When I get to the second valve, I notice that one of the big fellas is inside. So I see an opportunity to do a drop kick from hell and execute it perfectly. I kill him and teabag him. Because nothing says you're a mature adult like dipping your balls onto a dead NPC's forehead. I turn the valve on and head for the final one. And when I get there, it's in a tight space. So my best option is to drop kick of course. Crane's legs have developed into the ultimate killing machines. He must be used to kickboxing kangaroos back in the motherland. Nice. I head for the primary valve now, and there's zombies up the fucking wazoo. So I swim under them and find Big Cunt McGee guarding the valve. He eats a bullet with his cranium, and I turn the valve on. But now the place is going to explode. So I head back out, and while swimming, I realise that Crane transcends all mortal humans because he can speak clearly underwater. Alright, I opened the local valves plus the primary gate. Very cool, Crane. Jeff told us that we fucked up, and now we need to clear the blue gas lines. So I cover myself in some zombie and start turning them off. No worries at all. When we're done, Jeff calls and he tells us that this isn't the Navy and to sober up. Sorry, Jeff. I just inhaled enough gas to kill a fucking T-Rex and nearly died like 15 times. Also, you can have a post-apocalyptic fortress, you fucking dick cheese ridden cock gobbler. We get back to him and he starts to fire up his apocalypse wall. Wow, that's actually pretty cool, Jeff. I hope nothing bad happens. I check out his dead body and see that he's got a shotgun. Nice, another gun added to the collection. The only thing that survived the explosion is his porcelain throne. So at least now I know if I ever need to take a shit, I can do so in peace. I find these guys on the way back to the tower and test out the shotgun. As expected, it's fucking great. But I still prefer the ultimate method of breaking my ribs to watch a zombie become a flying meat sack. I get back to the tower and find this handsome looking fellow who tells us that a very rich bloke needs our help and we need to head to his chief engineers when the time arises. So I start heading for Jade when they give me a call. They just insult each other over the phone and by the time they get off the radio I'm already looking at them. I'm surprised that they aren't surprised because they didn't even give me a location but I still showed up as the call finished. They tell me that they need hooks to transport heavy cargo over the city but while they're ordering me around they insult my talent oh my god cunt am I fucking retarded? They insult my intelli- <laughs> they insult my intelligence multiple times so I stare deep into their soul to intimidate them. When I go to leave they say that they sent a gorilla to do a chimp's job if these guys throw any more insults at me, I'm going to go into a fit of rage and accidentally pull the trigger of my shotgun twice. I get to the warehouse and just know that this ceiling is going to collapse, so I do some epic parkour and avoid it. I'm so cool, it's gobsmacking. I head inside and drop kick some blokes before grabbing the dumb hooks that Fuckface 1 and Fuckface 2 need. 
I get back to them and give them their hooks, and they keep insulting me. They're lucky I'm in a safe zone, otherwise I'd be drop kicking them into oblivion as well. Then I spot Jafar, the guy that I threatened for rice, for money, and he doesn't seem too happy to see me. He tells us that Rice's men have found something that can take down the tower in one go. Why are these guys so determined to kill innocent people? If I was Rise, I'd be sending chocolates and teddy bears to Brecken, because who needs enemies when there's zombies that want to rip you apart limb from limb? On the way to the construction site, I see some guys that aren't Rice's men, and they open fire immediately. So I have to show them what 2,000 hours on CSGO looks like. I take them out and take all of their guns, and then perform the coolest dropkick in the entire playthrough. Someone get the UFC to sign this man. I spot an armoured van driving around, and I think to myself how cool it would be to own one in real life. Road rage wouldn't be a problem if I had spikes on every panel of my fucking car. I get to the construction site and Rice's men have actual guns. Nice. More money for me. I clear them out and find some TNT. You'd think Rice would have this stuff guarded by more men and not people who have the aim of a child with no fingers attempting to fire their first gun. I spot a safe house, and my ape brain kicks in, and I just have to go and secure it. The zombies stand no chance at this point. Crane is way too powerful, and honestly nothing can stop him. It's just unfair to anyone who tries. They get drop kicked, and sent to fucking space. I get back to Jafar, and he tells me that they can cook something up for me with the TNT. I don't know what kind of meal TNT would be included in, but I'm sure it would taste delicious. With that completed, I head to meet Jade to look through the school. She must have been in this carriage for days because I've been piss fighting around doing more important stuff. What a woman. We move up to keep a lookout and some guys try run away from to here and they get shot. They should have zigzagged like you do in COD when you get shot at and maybe they would have been perfectly fine. I head for the roof and have a staring contest with this guy. He seems pretty friendly. Then drop kick some zombies off of the fucking roof. Imagine the last thing you see is some big Aussie legs flying at you before you do about 800 backflips and hit the ground head first. That's how I'd like to go out. We head inside and start looking for the Antizen. I walk through the school and end up finding Rice's men. They set an alarm off, so I kill all of them and turn it off again. I keep looking and find this zombie taking a shit. Sorry to interrupt, mate. I find some more of Rice's men and kill them with no regard. Crane is a mass murderer at this point, and no one can stop him. When I look through the crates, there's no Antizen, so we tell Jade about option number two. She doesn't care about what I have to say, so I head for the basement to meet her, until I find a zombie that doesn't attack me. She's kind of hot, and I think I'm falling in love with her, until her boyfriend comes along and ruins things for me. So I fucking obliterate them both. I find Jade and help her open the box. She calls me an oaf and I love it. Degrade me more, mummy. We find some C4 inside and I'm honestly confused how all of this stuff is being found. First TNT and now C4. Her arm must have had a lot of mines around because what else would you need this many explosives for? Then more of Rice's men show up. I can't be fucked dealing with these morons, so I pull out my Glock and deal with them quickly. I head outside and get a close-up encounter with my favourite Marvel character, Spider Zombie. Then I call Jade and she tells me to not let Raheem near the zombie hive with the explosives. He's an adult and I'm not his daddy, so he can do whatever the fuck he wants. Thanks for watching legends, make sure to like, comment what you enjoyed, and subscribe for more. Cobb out.